Hey, what's up? Stephanie, the English coach here from EnglishFullTime.com. Today, I have a really fun exercise for you to help you improve your English. We are going to do shadowing. This is something that I wrote. It's actually an email that I sent my email subscribers, uh, I don't know, like a week ago. I'll show it to you. But it's a story. It's a personal story about something that I went through, something really embarrassing, actually. And here's what we're going to do. I'm going to read it for you. And then you can actually go check a link in the description and download the story so you can follow along. And I'm going to include another link where you can listen to just the audio because right now we're going to have the story audio mixed in with my YouTube video. And if you just want to analyze this story, then and just the audio, which I highly recommend, you can go download that. But what we're doing here is a shadowing exercise. We're going to help you practice your speaking, your pronunciation, reading out loud. But the best way I believe to do this is to first listen to somebody read something, right? And then analyze the way that they read it. Listen, 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 listen again, listen a lot. Really get your ears adjusted to all of the different sounds and how the words link together. And then practice reading yourself. And when you practice, you want to try to match the way that the person read whatever they read. If you're doing the shadowing exercise the way it should be done, you want to match the intonation. You want to match the rhythm. You want your reading to sound as close to my reading as possible. Now, this is an exercise that my students have done so many times in all of my online courses. And it's so cool because sometimes they literally sound exactly like me by the time they finish doing the exercise. And some students have even trained themselves to do this by being blindfolded, which I thought that was a really incredible way of learning how to imitate somebody, right? They would blindfold themselves so that they weren't actually looking at the words, but they were just listening, really focusing on hearing everything accurately. And when the students did that, oh my goodness, like <laughs> the way they were able to read and recite whatever it was that we were studying, they sounded exactly like me. So anyways, I thought this would be really fun. It's kind of personal. It's different. We haven't tried something like this on my channel yet. So I guess just listen to the story first and then you can download everything and get to work. Okay, so here we go. Remember, this is an email that I sent that now I'm using here as content for us to study. So it starts off like this. Did I ever tell you my super embarrassing ballet story? It happened when I was in 12th grade. First of all, I don't know if you know this, but ballet is super difficult. Professionals make it look easy, but it takes years and years of training to get good. I guess I didn't know that when I was 17 years old though, because I thought I could totally skip ballet one and jump to a ballet two class despite never having taken a single dance class in my life. In my mind, the idea of taking ballet one with a bunch of children was boring and beneath me. I wanted something difficult. I wanted a challenge. So I asked the teacher if I could skip ballet one and join the ballet two class. Actually, I insisted. She, being the professional that she was, graciously obliged. Come to class on Monday with the Ballet 2 student, Stephanie, she said. You can give it a shot and we'll go from there. I was so excited. But then Monday came. And I will never forget the humiliation of trying to keep up with an advanced class that I was totally unprepared for. The music was too fast. My feet were too stiff. And my muscles were too weak. At that point, I didn't need the teacher or anyone else to tell me what was so readily apparent. I clearly was not ready for ballet two, and it was naive of me to ever think I could skip the fundamentals. I still cringe to this day when I remember that story, but I learned something I will never forget, and that's this. It doesn't matter how much of a hardworking overachiever you are. If you want to master a skill, you cannot skip the fundamentals. Mastering the basics gives you a solid foundation on which you can build. And then, as you learn, practice, and train diligently, advancing becomes natural and inevitable. Every expert was once a beginner. Every skilled craftsman was once an apprentice. Every great artist was once a novice. And yet, 
I often see so many English students wanting to practice fast, connected speech in English when they still haven't mastered their vowel sounds in English or the TH or the R. That's unwise and impractical because poor pronunciation strung together quickly in a sentence will simply result in spoken English that is difficult to decipher or simply unintelligible. So here's my advice. Take the time you need to completely master every sound of the English language according to the accent you aim to master. Once you achieve this, your English will shine with clarity and your eyes will beam with confidence. If you would like me to help you with this, go here to see what I have for you. Wishing you all the success in the world, Stephanie. This was an email actually that I wrote to promote one of our courses. This is my Amazing American Accent Sound Bank course where I go in depth into every single sound of my American accent. So if you're still struggling with sounds in English and you want to improve your pronunciation, this course would be great for you. But anyways, back to the email. This is the email. I hope you enjoyed this story. I hope you enjoyed hearing about my embarrassing ballet experience. That was actually a really crazy experience because I really did think that I was such a hard worker and I would be able to do it, you know? So I begged and asked that teacher, can I please skip the ballet one class, go to ballet two? Like I wanted something hard. I wanted something difficult. And she was so nice. And so just like, okay. And sometimes it takes going through an experience to learn. Like you won't always learn just if somebody tells you the truth. Sometimes you actually have to go through an experience to learn yourself. And that's exactly what happened to me when I did the ballet two class. I was like, whoa, I do not belong here. Like, and it also gave me so much respect for people who do ballet and dance and all kinds of things that I had never done before. Like people that are good at something, they make it look easy, but that doesn't mean that it is easy. And that also doesn't mean that they didn't put hours and hours and hours and years and years of hard work and effort, blood, sweat, and tears into what they have done, right? When you see somebody make something look easy, that is how you know they are really good at it. <laughs> okay, so anyways, here's what you can do. Again, go to the link in the description, download this, this document, so you can read it, so you can study the vocabulary, and then I'm also going to attach a file where you can listen, an audio file where you can listen to the story. And then I want you to practice listening and reading out loud yourself. And if you want, you can come back to this video, to the part where I read out loud here, and you can slow it down. You can use the features inside YouTube, the settings, or you can add an extension to your browser that will allow you to slow down the story so you can really hear how I'm connecting those words. But this is an exercise in just listening. Okay, you have to listen, you have to do the work. I'm not gonna break every little last thing down. I've taught a lot about connected speech in my other videos. So now it's time for you to get analytical and really try this on your own. Let me know how it goes in the comments. Let me know if you enjoy this exercise. I really hope you do. Yeah, hopefully you enjoy the material that we're working with too, because it's about me and it's kind of personal. But anyways, uh, that's not the point. The point is just listening and shadowing and imitating and just trying to have some fun here with your English. Okay, so that's it. Oh, I will also leave a link to the Amazing American Accent Sound Bank course in the description in case anybody wants to check that out. And of course, if you have any questions about it or anything, you can always email me or just hit me up in the comments. I will uh, talk to you later. Take care. Bye.